During the week on Monday, a new company was formed. It's called Neuralink. I'm going to talk today about some of the things that I think are going to happen within this company. Let's take a look at uh, what Elon has given a little bit of insight. So this was about six to nine months ago, and this was almost his initial thought around what this company that he started was going to be. Something that I think is going to be quite important is a neural lace. If you assume any rate of advancement in AI, we will be left behind by a lot. We would be so far below them in intelligence that it would be, would be like you know, a pet. The solution that, that seems maybe the best one to have an AI layer. If you think of like you've got your limbic system, um, your cortex, and then a digital layer, a sort of a third layer above the cortex, could work, work well and symbiotically with with you. We're already a cyborg. I mean, you have a digital version of yourself online in the form of your emails and your social media. You have more power than the President of the United States had 20 years ago. You can answer any question, but the constraint is input out output. So we're, we're IO bound. Your output level is so low. It's like, particularly on a phone, like your two thumbs are sort of tapping away. Um, this is ridiculously slow. Our input is much better because we have a high bandwidth visual interface. Our eyes take in a lot of, da lot of data. So it's it'd be some sort of direct cortical interface. And you called it a neural lace. Neur neural lace, yeah. It's totally not Google Glass, right? No. I, I'm talking about no, something which... No, but it's which, like you wear it? Or you... No. I mean, it would be uh, some sort of interface directly with your cortical neurons, particularly. But doesn't that imply uh, surgical insertion? Not or? necessarily. You could go through the veins and arteries, because that, that provides a, a complete uh, roadway to um, all of your neurons. Still so, some kind of surgery, right? Yes, but it, you could insert something into the jugular. It doesn't involve chopping your, your, your skull off or anything like that. That's yeah. good. If we can figure out how to establish a high bandwidth neural interface. With ourselves. With, with your digital self. And, and the goal of this is to prevent there being an external AI be so much more powerful and intelligent than we are that the house it'll be, it'll be godlike in situation in occurs. Yeah. Are you interested in exploring this possibility? So, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> I'm not saying that I will. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, so, somebody should do it. And I mean, if somebody doesn't do it, then I, then I think I should probably do it. But. Uh, <laughs> So he gave about six months between then, and I think he must have just gone, well, no one's done it yet, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> this company is one of the most interesting companies that's coming that we don't know anything really about. So there's two separate components that are very important when thinking about this. There is output, the human output. Say, for instance, how we can use our mind to control things like this. The Emotive Epoch is a device that reads your brain waves and allows you to control objects, uh, devices, applications simply with your mind. The raw electrical signals from neurons inside my brain firing. Once the Epoch reads your mind, it's just a matter of sending a wireless signal to whatever it is you want to control. So this is the device here. This is it. You can buy this for sub $1,000. This guy here, I actually battled this guy on a TV show on TBS last year called America's Greatest Makers. We were battling for a million dollars. He created a flyable drone that he controlled with his mind. I created a device that lets you physically interact with someone at a distance, be it if they were in Australia. I could physically communicate with them. Someone who was on Mars, you could physically communicate. We battled against each other for $100,000 and uh, a Bluetooth toothbrush one. <laughs> they ended up taking away a million dollars, but there is no bitterness because we must move on to the next part, input and output. So we've looked at the output of the human body, and this is how you can control things with your mind. But how do we take input to control us? Last week, we saw Ken do a demonstration around people moving their arm. In case you didn't see it, here is a similar line, but involving our friend Nolan Bushnell. We're gonna strap a couple of electrodes to Nolan's arm. We are going to listen to the brain signals from Nolan's motor cortex. We're gonna copy those signals and inject them into my arm. He's going to control me as I control Pong. There's something sketchy about that. We need you to go right... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. I, I'm liking this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> So we had it turned up a whole lot more than you did last week because we wanted the reaction. But fundamentally, what was happening there, Nolan was using his mind to take control of my body. So now we're talking about the input and output of an actual person. Let's take that one step further. What happens when you add artificial intelligence? Because as you saw there, Nolan could make my arm move, but it was in a very erratic and chaotic way. 
What if you could harness a very focused movement where I just take control of one part of your body? And check this. There's middle finger, ring finger. Whoa. Oh, yeah. For reference, pinky, middle finger. Whoa. Tilting for index finger. Here's somewhere. Come on, index finger. Found it. So that is playing Roxanne. I'm now going to play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Check this. Are you controlling? It works. <laughs> so what is happening there is I created an artificially intelligent device that took control of my body and it knows how to play the piano. I don't know how to play the piano. So fundamentally, there is a whole bunch of skills. Anything that involves muscle movement, you have to learn. But the problem is, like, I don't know how to do karate. I don't know how to play the piano. I don't need to. I strapped myself into this device. We took the electronics, 3D printed a shell, started strapping electrodes to my face as well, just to try and work out how to move the face. Don't do it. I created this device. This. This here, and this isn't science fiction, this is a product that actually exists. You put this on your arm and it will play the piano for you. There's no lateral movement at the moment, so you have to do it within wherever, like the, the C to G or whatever the chords are there. You have to keep it there, so it can do. Mary Had a Little Lamb. I did a performance of Roxanne by Sting and uh, Hotline Bling by Drake, which was a wonderful, wonderful performance. So. Think back to the Matrix. Back in the Matrix, there was a moment where Trinity needed to use a helicopter, but she didn't know how to fly a helicopter. Theoretically, using a system like this, if I was wearing the glove and you had a system that could see the control panel of the helicopter, say like an iPhone just pointed at it, an AI system could look at the controls, it could see the altitude, it could see the dials, it would know what to do and it could take control of my body to fly the helicopter. The premise there is that we're always building robots. I like to think that the human is a great locomotion system. Why don't we use ourselves as robots and just hyper advance what we can do with ourselves? Because we're always limited by what we know. So keep an eye on Neuralink. Um, as I said, I'm a roboticist, I'm not a neurologist, however, I love hacking things. I love hacking things apart. So I'm going to give my vision for where I think Neuralink's going to go in the future. It's a three-phase vision. What I see, in the short term, a neural lace will be able to have muscle control and sensory augmentation. So let's quickly just talk what that was. Muscle control, like this device where I have to strap it onto my arm, I'm electrically stimulating nerves in my arm. I think Neuralace will be able to do that, but at the source. The sensory augmentation, I view as what he was saying, the input of your eyes, these fantastic eyes, I think augmented reality will start as glasses and physical things on top of your eyes, but then we will be able to hijack that part and inject vision into it. So rather than wearing glasses that augment what you see, we will directly augment what you see right from the brain. There is then a giant leap, and I call it the midterm, which is data injection. This is all around how to do things, how to then control and be better at karate, possibly altering memories, but I think altering memories purely comes just from actually doing things. So I think that's going to be really around taking education and jamming it into your mind and making your body do things. The long, long term, I think is data collection. Being able to take out memories and thoughts and almost create a database of your mind in an AI system. I don't know, I've got the perfect around that, I've got no idea. That's what I think the, uh, the, the vision for this company is. Hyper interesting though. Um, overall, my name's Greg, thanks. All right! Hey.